Okay. Hi. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about some of the deep search features available on Google and some of the extra cool stuff that Google's added in that you can use uh, when you're doing Google searches. Now here's my Google home page right here. Uh, might look a little bit different because I've added a custom picture on it. Uh, if you want to add a picture, you can just change your background image right there if you have a Google account and it'll let you upload a picture. But um, what I'm going to do is just show you some of these new features. So the first one you may notice is right here on the right hand corner is a little microphone and that allows you to do Google searches without typing anything in. So if I wanted to search for hamburger for example because I'm kind of hungry uh, I just click the button. Hamburger. And then Magically, boom, there's my search right up there on the screen. So what we're going to be focusing on is mostly this stuff on the left-hand column right here, which gives you lots of different ways for searching for stuff that you might be looking for. So you're pretty familiar already with the traditional uh, Google search field, which is right here in the middle. But by clicking over here, we can actually search in a lot of different ways for different types of things. So let's say, for example, I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm going to do a Google search, image search for, let me see, images. Let's say, for example, I want a hamburger bed. All right, and I saw a picture of a hamburger bed. All right, and I want to search for it using the picture I found. All I have to do is click on that little camera right there. And I can upload an image my file and Google will give me every single website that has that same picture in it so I can find exactly what I'm looking for. Also as you know in Google you can set your different uh, search standards right here so if you click over here you can turn your safe search off, you can give a moderate safe search or strict if you've got kids who are looking for images you want to keep that on strict to make sure that nothing inappropriate pops up onto the screen. Um, obviously if we continue to look over here we can see we can search for videos let's say we can look for all of the latest and recent videos on hamburgers we can check out the latest news on hamburgers. We can go shopping for hamburgers. And one of the cool things I like about the shopping feature is if we go ahead and put that in, we can actually create a shopping list of stuff that we want to buy for later. And we can put that on our list. For example, I'm going to go and add that hamburger bed in because that's definitely something I might want to check out later. And that's added to my shopping list of all the stuff that I'm thinking about buying. Okay, We also can read product reviews right here and even do price comparisons by clicking on compare prices and see lots of different people who have that particular item on sale. So we can see the books that are dealing with that same topic. We can even look at different places that might be connected with that. So if we're looking for a good hamburger or where to buy a hamburger, it already knows where I am because I'm signed into my Google account and it'll take me right to all the places in Tucson where I can buy a good hamburger. Blogs are obviously pe things that people have written about. So you can look at some of the most recent uh, blog posts that people have written on a certain topic discussions or chats that people are having, recipes, so all kinds of bit, different stuff over here that allows you to search in different ways for what you might be looking for. All right, also, you'll notice that there are several other features down here, like for example, posts and home pages. Right. If you do a search for posts and home pages, these are again like different websites or web pages where people are writing about that particular topic. So it'll eliminate all the other stuff and just keep people's personal web blogs or web pages about that particular topic. Another really great feature is this time feature right here right, where we can actually designate 
how old we want a web page to be. So if we want to, for example, eliminate any web pages that are older than a year old, okay, we can actually do a search and only go for something that appeared in the last month. Okay. And that way, we know we're getting most recent information or current information by clicking on the time range. We can even set a custom range so that we can only get posts or information that are on a specific day or maybe a specific week or between two specific time periods. So, um, lots of other tools there on the side of the page. Let's continue to look. If we scroll down, you can see we can search sites with images. Okay. So, that will only give us websites that have pictures related to them that we can see. Okay. And this one is particularly good. I like this one a lot. It's called Timeline. And what this does is it gives us a history of when the posts were made um, and or when they refer to the particular post. So let's say, for example, this goes all the way to 1100 AD. don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and make it 1950 to 2011. Okay. And it only provides information related to that specific topic that's tied into a certain date. All right. So it gives us all the most relevant information just within that specific date range. So if we look at 1969, right, this is a post about the Battle of Hamburger Hill, uh, which was obviously a battle uh, in uh, the Vietnam War. Um, so that's a really great way if you're working with students who are looking for a specific date or an event related to a specific date, you can see uh, how many posts are related to that particular era or that period in time. Um, you can look at the most visited pages. So this is a really good one because this one will list your pages by the most uh, number of times that you've visited it. So um, you can pick pages that have not been visited. So you can eliminate anything you've already searched for. So if you've already looked for hamburger on a certain number of pages and you don't want to see any of the pages you've already seen, you just click on not yet visited and it'll eliminate all that other stuff for you. Dictionary obviously will give you a definition. This one is really good because this separates your pages by reading level. So you've got a basic, an intermediate, and an advanced reading level. These are all really good because obviously if you're working with students who are reading at a certain level, you want to target those sites to them. So you can actually just search the basic sites that have very low reading levels or easy reading levels and get rid of your advanced reading levels. Um, and nearby, obviously, is just what it sounds. It does searches for area or place, places where you've gone. And you can even translate uh, your page or switch your site. So these are just some of the features that you can do uh, when using your deep uh, search features on Google. Hope you found this informative and stay posted for further uh, tutorials on how to use search engines.